Good morning. This is SMK from Brock Hill Christian Center. Uh, once more, we connected to our viewers on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, and we believe that even this day will be a blessing to all of us as we connect to worship the Lord uh, through the airwaves. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, that your presence be eminent. We pray, O oh God, that your transforming power through your word should begin to touch lives and move us, O oh God, to a place where we will be able to hear clearly what the Spirit is saying to the churches in days like this. We pray, O oh God, for your presence. We pray for your message. We pray for your favor. And we thank you for the anointing upon our lives. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, that once more you've granted us this opportunity, Lord, to connect with your people, wherever they may be, so that your name be glorified. We praise your God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, family, we, we will be getting our scripture reading today from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, and we'll be reading from the ninth verse to the last verse, which is verse 22. And I'm reading from the New King James, and it reads thus. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word, and we shall all shout, Amen. Now today, family, I want us to talk about the ability to hear God's voice. I want to talk about the ability to hear God's voice. Now, as you have noticed and seen and have been witnessing that there have been quite a number of voices that have been speaking now lately on planet Earth. Uh, but the good thing is that the voice of the Lord will always prevail because he alone is God. And Christ spoke these words to his disciples, which are also relevant to us, which he still speaks to us through his word in the book of John. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Now, 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 now the ability to hear God's voice, it is not an easy thing it is not a thing that can be developed overnight. We, we develop hearing voice through many engagements and encounters with God and His. And that is why again in the book of John, Jesus said to Peter, Do you love me? And as Peter was answering, just to paraphrase so that we keep time, and Jesus said, feed my flock, my sheep. And as he continued to ask him again, he said about the lambs, take care of my lambs. Because lambs need to be taken care of because they have not yet developed the, the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. But that's a, that's a subject for another day. Let, let's talk today about the ability to hear God's voice. I want us to understand three things about hearing. One, for you to be able to hear, you must be listening. In other words, a person needs to intentionally listen to that which is transmitted for them to be able to hear. Hallelujah. You cannot hear without Hallelujah. You have to be listening to be able to hear. Number two, you must be able to interpret. 
able to respond. You must be able to interpret the sound that you hear so that you are able to interpret what you are hearing. Unfortunately, many people do hear sounds but are unable to interpret because they are not having the ability to sift nor discern that which is being transmitted. Hence, they end up being gullible and, and receiving anything that is spoken, anything that is transmitted and end up being confused, being, end up being hit and end up being derailed. We need to be able to sift what we are hearing and be able to interpret. Hallelujah. And the third thing, which is quite insatiable, when you are listening and hearing the voice, you must be able to depict the sound that is being transmitted as to what kind of a sound and why is it transmitted and why you are hearing it. It's like, for recent, if there is a horn outside your house, you need to be able to depict whether it is a horn of a bicycle man who is delivering post, or is it a horn that calls for your attention to move by the gate, or is it a horn that signals something is not right for you to take precautions. And, and it is vital in the days that we are living in that the church should have the ability to do that. When we speak biblical language, we talk, we, we speak of the discerning spirit. We need to be able to discern the kind of spirit. We need to discern why is it is it transmitted? Is it a call to war? Is it a call to prayer? Is it a call to mourning? We need to descend that as a church, hearing God's voice. Now, in the scripture where we've written, we've read, the following things are being said by the Lord Jesus to the church at Laodicea. And I believe that we are the Laodicean church. And I can highlight why I believe that the, the 21st century church is a Laodicean church. This is a church that has got a reputation of being alive yet dead. This is a church that boasts that it has got wonderful visions, yet blinded. This is a church that, that claims that it is clothed upon with the glory, yet naked. This is a church that boasts that it is rich and it, it can reach the far ends of the globe, yet it is poor. This is a church that is able to ride on the waves of social media to transmit the gospel Yet what is transmitted, it's not the gospel, but something that looks like it because it, it lacks the transforming power that which Jesus released when he went back to glory. And I believe in these days the Spirit is speaking to us so that he should realign the church with the real purpose. He is aligning the church with the real transmission. He's aligning the church with the real power. And that's what we're going to talk about when we talk about the ability of hearing. And in his statement in verse 19, Jesus says, as many as I love, I rebuke. Something that has been depleted in our churches. There is no longer rebuke. And that is why the church is lame. That's why the church is like a tame dog. That's why the church is like a hungry lion, which its tooth has been broken. And that's why the church is blinded. And that's why the church, it's muted. And because there is no longer rebuke. People come willingly as they will. They do as they will. They act as they will because there is no rebuke. And I rebuke and I also chastise. Chastise means he is able to punish. And that's something that has been taken away from the 21st century. People believe that because God is a God of grace, he cannot punish he cannot rebuke, he cannot chastise, and, and, and that is why the church has fallen into a deep sleep, because people have painted God as a toothless father. And we, we, we need to understand here and strike a balance. An angry God who always beats up the people, who always throw things at people, 
when they do wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to portray God as that. He's a loving father, yes, but he's also a God of justice. And he chastises the people whom he loves because he wants us to be like him. He wants us to portray his glory. He wants us to do his will as it is written in his book. Hallelujah. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Repentance is not found in our churches because the transmission from our pulpit does not steer the people to be more like Jesus. It just makes people to come to church for glamour. It, it takes people to come to church for some other things than to meet with Jesus for good encounters that will bring transformation. Repent, repent, and repent. The word repent means being taken back to the penthouse, which means the highest peak where we belong, where we've been before we fell. And we need to repent as a church. Repent for neglecting the altar. Repent for playing church. Repent for not going out there and tell people about the wrath of God that is coming. Repent for neglecting the prayer altar. Repent for speaking things which the Lord has not sent us to say. But today we're not talking about that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stirring our hearts so that we be attentive. The ability to hear God. Now, people who hear God, you see them by their actions. People who hear God, you see them by their actions. When people hear God, they don't act like the world. They don't think like the world. They don't do things like the world. When they hear God, there is a transformation that happens in their minds. They do not conform to the standard. They do not do things the way they want, but they do things as they hear the commanding voice of the master. People who hear God are loving. People who hear God are able to repent. People who hear God are able to stand up and do the will of the Lord no matter what. No matter what the price they need to pay, but they're able to hear God. People who hear God cleanse themselves as they are clean. People who hear God, they do his bidding. They pick up their cross and follow Christ. People who hear God, they paint their world blue. In other words, they portray the glory and the character of Jesus at all times. People who hear God, they have their heart soaked in the wind. Hallelujah. People who hear God, they've got a heavenly resemblance. They have the likeness of God. In other words, they live where there is power and therefore in their speaking forth, they, transfer, they transmit power. People who hear God, they receive the anointing as they get the inhaling of God's spirit that causes them to do his will. Now let's get into the gist. Let he who has an ear hear what the spirit says to the churches. God is speaking in our days. He is speaking through the natural forces and unfortunately people are too blinded to hear that. He is speaking through his servants, but the people are too deaf to hear that. He is speaking through the happenings and the occurrence that are happening in our daily lives, but the people are too blinded to hear that or too busy to hear that. Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Hallelujah. And I believe in our days, the days that we are living in, God is speaking also as he spoke in the days of Noah. As Noah was raised by God to tell the people who lived in his world that it was time to prepare themselves for God 
and for them to escape the wrath that was coming because it was going to rain. And there, as he was building the ark, he was preparing for people who are ready to run into the ark and escape the wrath. But as we know, the people refused to listen. They continued to play. They continued to rival. They, they continued to marry and, and to drink and to get into pleasures. They continued as normal as people are doing in our days until the day that Noah was, was shut inside the ark. And Jesus spoke these words in the book of Matthew 24, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the returning of the Son of Man. People will be carrying on in lives, with their lives as they normally did, even before the rain. Until the day it started raining and Noah was shut in the ark and there was no time to turn back. Now, even in our day, soldiers, I'm here to give a warning. And I believe that this message today is not something that a lot of people will be happy to hear. It's not something that people would clap hands into. But I believe it us a warning that it is time for us to get ready because Jesus is coming back. Actually, he's at the door. Hallelujah. Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I believe also that this is what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Make amends and not play church. Do not pretend to be in right standing with God when you have moved away from the foundation. Stop transmitting that which does not glorify God. We're living in days where we, as the people who are sent by God, we have pushed Jesus out of his throne, and we are sitting as the worshipped. And, 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 and that has stirred up the cup of his wrath. And it is about time we uphold Christ, and we let him sit on his throne. And we point people to Jesus who is able to change lives, who is able to save to the utmost, who is able to bring peace that surpasses all understanding. Let him who, he, who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Like I said in my opening statement, there are too many voices out there and some are there to instill fear in the hearts of the people, causing people to be afraid and to be to be stirred up many voices. The voice of the Lord in his word. It's speaking better things and strengthening and telling us that in him we shall have peace, in him we shall be strengthened, in him we are protected in him we are sheltered in him the of mercy in him is glory to shelter us from the gross darkness that is covering the earth let him who has an ear hear what this the spirit is saying to the churches i believe in the days that we are living in there are churches that are going to survive only if when they are firmly built in the foundation of the truth. There are churches that are going to survive only if they are moving under the unction of the Holy Spirit. There are churches that are going to survive only if they are moving and staying in the purity that is brought by the sanctifying work of the Spirit and continuously cleansed by the blood of the Lamb that has power even in the 21st century. I believe the churches that will survive are churches that are relevant to the will and the purposes of God in the 21st century, not churches that are trying to be politically correct. I believe the churches that will survive are churches that truly fear the Lord and churches that have made it their concern to serve God in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. Who
saying to the churches there are churches whose doors will be shut because suddenly the spirit of the lord will stir up people and they will begin to distinguish between the lying voice and the voice of the master and people will be able to connect with the voice of the lord who is standing by the door and knocking at the doors of our hearts seeking people who are able to distinguish the voice seeking people who are able to to discern the kind of sound they are hearing, seeking for people who are able to distinguish the kind of a horn that they are hearing, that this is a horn that is signaling to them that it is time to come out of the comfort zone, it is time to come out of our lazy cushioned houses and, and step out to glorify the lord with our lives step out to speak of the oracles of god step out to worship the lord in truth step out to glorify him at all times hallelujah he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches believe you me these times call for those who are earnestly and truthfully called by god Mandiribo Shakabahanda. The people who are called by God, I'm not referring to people who are in the fivefold ministry only. I'm talking about all the people who are raised by God for a noble purpose purpose people who are raised by god to connect with what god is doing and it's about to do hereafter because believe you me soldier it may not seem so but there is a great awakening that has been released from the lord for i saw in the vision of the night that the lord is releasing a flood that is going to sweep across planet earth he is bringing a revival that will shake the entire world. And I believe that the true church will emerge. The Odyssean church will be brought on its knees in total shame. Because I believe, as the Bible says, Jesus is coming back for a church that is without spiritual wrinkles. There is an eighth church that is imagine because the Lord is releasing the floodgates of glory to wash away the filth that we have witnessed in the church to wash away the lies that we've witnessed in the church to 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 wash away the, the all the trickery and the debauchery that we have witnessed in the church all the murderous that the murderous thing, the adultery, the fornication that was being done in the church in the name in the name of grace and 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 transmission that God will understand, and God is releasing the floodgate to wash away so that His name be glorified, and I believe God is raising a new standard. God is raising a new glory. God is raising a new power. And I believe that even people who have no titles are bound in the great power of God. I believe that even people who have no titles are bound to rise up and they will wrought miracles and work wonders in the name of their God. I believe that time has come for Jesus to arise and his enemies be scattered. And I believe that time has come for his name to be glorified. And surely the scripture will be fulfilled. For the earth will be covered with the Lord's glory as the waters cover the sea. Believe you me, soldiers, the time is now. Let him who, who has an ear hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I believe we are going to witness a discovery of a lot of hidden things. I believe that we are going to see a lot of things that were swept under the carpet coming to the surface. I believe that the Lord is going to truly expose they that mourned whose hearts were connected to the heartbeat of the Lord when others were having their own way deceiving and getting deceived. 
And I believe that the Lord is going to restore the days that were devoured by the locust. I believe that the tree that has been stripped of, of the fruits and, and the branches of the moth restored and the people will eat thereof and be healed. I believe we are entering into a zone where the Lord will manifest and even our children will be filled with the Spirit and I believe that they will prophesy. I believe we will be fully blown with the presence of the Lord and nobody will be deceived in these days. From they that have drank from the cup of the Lord that is running over. I believe what Hosea saw, the restoration of the church is about to be fulfilled. And I believe that which was spoken by the prophet Haggai, it's about to be seen. And I believe that was seen by the prophet Zechariah is about to be fulfilled. Jeshua's clothes are being changed and the burn is being removed and a new one is brought in. For there will be fresh revelation. Behold, Lord, it's the yesterday that have been lost and he is repairing and raising up the broken tabernacle of David and the Lord will be one with his people let him who has an ear hear what the spirit is saying to the churches I hear the Lord asking a question as he has asked through the prophet Hagar is there anyone left of you who saw the former glory who saw this house in its former glory how does it look now truly anyone who is not blind can attest that it looks like nothing wretched and dirty naked and weak before the people and that is why even the powers that be are able to pray with the church and do as they please but i've got news for you soldier let him who has an ear hear what the spirit is saying to the churches for i hear the lord saying i am shaking the foundation of the earth i am shaking the heavens to pour down my spirit and i will show wonders God is shaking the foundations and he will come through for his people and the church will gain momentum and strength and they that ridiculed the church are about to come kneeling and weeping at the doorsteps to be held out seeking the God whom we serve for the Lord shall be glorified and the Lord shall be exalted amongst nations and upon the earth. Let him hear, he who has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Soldier in closure, I pray that your ears be circumcised so that you hear what the Spirit is saying. I pray that you are able to sift what you hear so that you don't believe a lie that will derail you and put you away from the purpose of God in times such as this. I pray that the spirit of discernment be given unto you so that you, you begin to discern what you hear. I pray that you become wise and be enlightened in the spirit of your mind so that the enemy do not deceive you. For I know that the days are dangerous. If it were possible, even the elect would be deceived as the Lord said. But let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit says. Remember what the Lord says. He who overcomes will sit on my throne and reign with me as I sat with my father to reign. Hallelujah. As much as I love, I rebuke and chastise. I believe this is a chastising of the Lord, wanting us to repent so that we should enjoy the best of the Lord. I hear Isaiah speaking to us as I close, 
and he says come my people let us reason together let us sit on the round table and discuss let us reason if you are willing you will eat the best of the world but if you refuse and rebel the sword will devour but even though your sins may be red as crimson they shall be washed in the blood of the lamb and you'll be white as snow the lord god bless you let us meet when we celebrate the passover we'll be treating our theme i am blotched i am bleached and i am blessed starting from friday we shall have two transmissions and on sunday we shall have one god bless you amen